Thanks, Anthony, and welcome, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to thank the sponsors for this opportunity, um, Fishery Tour for organising a lot of it, and a lot of people have helped out in the field. The aim was to determine the health of the wild trout population's 12 rivers across the state, and it's just a map showing those locations. A bit hard to see, but the little box down here represents the Air River in, in the ways and coast of Victoria. And most of it was concentrated around the northeast, but the northeast also went down into um, Gippsland as well as the Trongo and the Yarra closer to Melbourne. So what did we do? First of all, we had to review some previous historical data and population surveys. From that, we identified sites that we had data so we could compare this year's data to. So we, we did that via a lot of Fisheries Victoria data and also the Arthur Ryle Institute where I work, we've also got a lot of fed database as well. So we did 41 sites across the 12 rivers and that was done in January to March earlier this year. So we surveyed the fish via electrofishing. The smaller streams is a picture of um, backpack electrofishing that took roughly 90 minutes of, of fishing time plus the processing of measuring, weighing and releasing the fish that we caught. The larger sites, we used the boat and that generally went for an hour and some of those sites, because the pools weren't big enough, we used a combination of boat and backpack electrofishing. Uh, just a few photos of the example type of streams that we surveyed. Um, as you can see some were up in the mountains, pretty rocky, a bit faster flowing, some were generally pretty shallow, some had a bit more pool area. So what did we find? This is just an overview of, of the fish. So we found 1,200 79 trout during those surveys. Brown trout, as you can see from the graph, are most dom dominant, so they're in the, the red colour. And this is just down the bottom, just the length of the fish. So you can see we've got some fish up to 55 centimetres. These are fork lengths, so they're reasonably large river fish, up to two, just over two kilo in weight. And amongst them, there was lots of locations that also had rainbow trout. So the brown trout population increased as altitude increased in nearly every river. Um, so this is just northern Victoria, and it's a bit hard to see there, but I'll show you in a second. If you take out this one particular site where we've got lots of fish, so that, that's representing the number of fish per 100 metres of river. So you've got nearly 90 fish for every 100 metres of river in that, that system, and that particular system, some of those fish were up to two pounds. And so it's a really, really good location. But if you take out, take out that one site, you can just look at what I was saying before. Once you get above 500 metres altitude, in northern Victoria, the, the number of fish per 100 metres increased. Once you got up real high in altitude, the abundance were very high, but the average size of fish was, really, was reduced. So they're much smaller, but there's a lot more. And, and what we found during this work and when we did the deletite tagging work, is that in the lower sections of these rivers, not many trout, a few. As you work your way up, you start getting more trout. All of a sudden, you'll hit the hot spot or the holy grail. You'll have a stretch of river where you get these bigger fish. And then as you work up, you'll get past that and then you start getting more and more abundances, but the size comes down again. So that was consistent in the two rivers that we did more than these three sites. And I'm pretty confident with the work I've done in the past that would be consistent with, with all the rivers across the state. A um, bit hard to see from that other graph, but the Air, Golden, Halper, King, Kiwa, Arvins and Trongo rivers all had at least one site with greater than 50 trout captured per 100 metres. And within that, there was the Golden, Halper, Kiwa and Trongo rivers had more than 100 fish per 100 metres at, at at least one of those three sites. So if you remember, some of the lower sites didn't have as many fish, but once you got up to the top, those abundances really, really increased. Nariel Creek was a bit of an oddity. We didn't get as many fish there. So it was half that of the next lowest stream, which was the, which was the Yarra River. But the Yarra is probably an underestimate because of the site conditions. There's a lot of deep water. There wasn't much boat access, and so we had to try and wade. And I think we would have missed quite a few fish that were, were, were there. So two of the four rivers in southern Victoria, they're the highest abundances, and those are that was at lower altitudes than in northern Victoria. Having said that, 
those streams don't go as high in altitude as northern Victoria. So there's, there's that relationship there, you move up, if you find these fish. The Dargo River had very, very low abundances, except for the highest altitudinal site. And again, you know, you've got greater than 50 fish per 100 metres. So once you push up an altitude there, it's good. Down low, I think, still the after effects of, the, of one of the slides that Anthony showed you earlier, where there was a, there was a pretty large bushfire went through in the last decade. And I think it's still a bit of an after effect. As I said before, it's a similar pattern throughout all these rivers. Low fish down low, as you move up, they really increase in abundances. So, a bit of a different track. What about the size of these fish? There was evidence of recruitment from 11 of the 12 priority rivers. So the Jemison River, the only one that didn't have any evidence of brown trout recruitment. That's not saying that they didn't recruit there last year. Because remember, we've only, only did three sites in that. So that's roughly a 600 metre section of that whole stream. So we could have quite easily missed them. So it's, these surveys are just a snapshot in time, a one-off, and you know, there's more than likely they're there. However, we did pick up rainbow trout recruitment in the Jemison River last year. No trout were collected from the Ovens River upstream of Harrietville, although the rainbow trout population showing signs of recovery up there. The Harrietville Township itself, when we did that site, we had to divide that into eight different sections. This is just one of those um, samples of three, three reasonable sized fish, um, just from one of those shots, plus there was other other smaller fish amongst it as well. So what I think is happening in the ovens is that it's recovered at Harrietville, but those fish haven't pushed up further from the, the big sediment slug and impact of fires that happened in 2013. And there's records of, of fish and snake deaths from that horrendous event that went through. So I think just a matter of time and it will recover and damage and early. These populations are pretty resilient. No rainbow trout were collected from the Air, Air Dargo and Yarra rivers. I looked at our records and I don't think there's ever been a rainbow trout in the Air River. So that's not surprising we didn't find any. Um, the Dargo and Yarra is probably, a, probably an effective sampling effort. Not many sites, not, not large distances at, at each of these sites. So I'm not saying they weren't there. So this graph is showing it's a catch bee unit of young year fish. So that's the recruitment from last year. That's really um, number of fish per 100 metres again. So you can see rainbow trout in the pink, brown trout in the blue. You can see that Jemison, no brown trout recruitment, low rainbow. The Nariel, low recruitment for both species. And the Yarra had low brown trout recruitment. The Yarra was a bit different because we didn't do any of the sites up much higher. They were based around um, Hillsville and just above Hillsville area tying in with, with a large existing data set that we did have. And so those results were actually comparable to previous surveys. Goulburn and King had huge recruitment pulses of rainbow trout and the Mida and Tarongo had large pulses of brown trout recruitment from last year's spawning events. So one of the things you'd be interested to see how they go, or the follow-up with surveys next year, because this will be three years in a row, if we can trace them through the population at that next size next year. Other notable observations while we did this, I've said this many times, the high trout abundances, but they were generally smaller fish, higher in altitudes. Low abundances or no trout in the lower sections of some streams, most probably related to, to temperature, but we'll talk about that in a, in a talk shortly. And there's often a section or a good patch of river where you get these, the trophy sized fish. Um, even though the abundances aren't as high, you know, there's, there's these patches where you get the one to two kilo fish, and they'll be different in each stream regarding where that patch is in relation to the geomorphology and altitude of those rivers. And as you all are all aware, um, the larger fish, they're all associated with good in stream cover, you know, overhanging back banks, in-stream woody habitat, so snags, stuff like that. So what else are we going to do with these priority rivers? As I said, we're going to monitor the trout populations in the next, for the next two years. We'll see if that level, high level of rainbow recruitment and brown recruitment was, was 
followed through to one plus year old fish next year. And most of the most of the rivers will be the same, although some of those rivers that had really good trout and they're healthy, which Taylor will go through in a minute. Um, they've been changed and there's been a new set of rivers recommended and that's through the RFL program with the, with the meeting so that so you people, the anglers, have identified these rivers to, to target and there's lots of people involved so I'd like to thank them all. Authorised by Victorian Government, 1 Treasury Place, Melbourne.